Hush Money Criminal Trial will resume deliberations this morning. Yesterday, the jurors sent two notes back to the judge. The first asked to review portions of testimony from former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker and from former Trump attorney and fixer Michael Cohen. The second note was for the jury instructions to be read to them again. Let's bring in former litigator and MSNBC legal correspondent Lisa Rubin. She was in the courtroom yesterday afternoon. Lisa, good morning. So another day of deliberation today. Uh, I guess about four and a half hours of it yesterday for this jury. What do you read into the two notes that were sent back, the substance of them? What do you think the jury was trying to get at here? I think the jury is trying to understand the formation of the conspiracy and Donald Trump's participation in it and is taking very seriously the instructions of Josh Steinglass, who said repeatedly to them that David Pecker's testimony was critical and that they should look back at it. So, for example, Willie, at the end of his summation, he was trying to get the jurors to focus on evidence of Donald Trump's direct involvement. And one of the things that he said to them was, you will recall that Pecker testified that after that meeting took place, Mr. Trump personally called Pecker to discuss the McDougal matter. And he explained that the defendant told him that he had spoken to Michael and that Michael had told him about Karen. So that's corroboration that Mr. Cohen is keeping Mr. Trump informed at every step. They went on to discuss that as Pecker and Trump went on to discuss whether the defendant should buy the story. Now, they got an instruction yesterday on something called accessorial liability. And I'm sorry, accomplice liability. And accomplice liability basically means that Michael Cohen's word alone isn't enough to convict Trump because Michael Cohen is Trump's accomplice. What they have to do is assure themselves that there's enough corroborating evidence that Trump can be convicted. Where do you get that? You get that from David Pecker, who is one of the only people here other than Michael Cohen, who says, I spoke directly to Trump about the conspiracy, and he affirmed to me that he knew what was going on and that he wanted to be involved with it. Yeah, and some of this testimony goes back to that first meeting back in August of 2015. They want to understand that relationship and how uh, close Donald Trump was to it. I um, want to get some clarification from you about the jury instructions. Donald Trump, some of his minions going on cable networks suggesting that they, the, the, the judge told the jury that they don't have to be unanimous. That's not true. Can you explain what this little dispute may be about? Yeah, that's not true at all. First of all, they have to be unanimous that the business records here were falsified, and that is the crime that was charged. With respect to what makes falsification of business records a felony, they also have to be unanimous that Trump intended to conceal a conspiracy to promote his own election in 2016. And they have to be unanimous that he did so or that he the conspiracy was through unlawful means. Here's the part where they can have differences of opinion. What are those unlawful means? Josh Steinglass gave them five or six different options that kind of fall into three categories. One is violations of the Federal Election Campaign Act through unlawful campaign contributions. One is falsification of other business records, like Michael Cohen's submission of forms to the bank through which he opened the account that he used to pay Stormy Daniels. The third are the tax forms that the Trump Organization prepared when they were showing Michael Cohen's quote unquote income, that income of $420,000 that was really the reimbursement to him. You, Willie, you, Rev, me, Lisa, we can all have different opinions on what those unlawful means are, but we all have to agree that there was a conspiracy, that it was executed by unlawful means. Donald Trump is playing fast and loose here with the concept of unanimity.